Hello everybody. In the last tutorial we learned how to import the images on various planes in SOLIDWORKS uh, accurately and precisely. In this tutorial we're going to explore how we can use those images and start tracing over it. So I'm just gonna start with the front plane here because we have already imported uh, a side view of this marker pen on our front plane. So I'm not gonna sketch anything on any of my picture sketches. I'm just gonna make a new sketch here. So I'm just gonna go to my front view. And uh, just so that you guys know, uh, we're going to explore uh, a loft bow space tool, maybe boundary bow space tool based on the requirement and need. Uh, we're going to explore a dome tool. We're going to explore split tool. And we're going to use uh, 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 a different strategy here. So if we see clearly this little area here, that's uh, one part. This entire area is a second part. And this front part here, including the tip, is a third part. So we have we have three separate parts that I'm dividing this, this object into. And then we're going to process them separately uh, to make this entire object. You see this line here, I think at, that's the place we're going to use the split tool just to cut them and provide them little fillets at the edges so, so that the details come out uh, pretty neat. So let's uh, start doing that. Just gonna go to front plane, I'm gonna make a sketch. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, I'm just gonna make a, a, a double up a strategy where I'm just gonna make a couple lines here. So I think that's that's the one part. So so that's one part, and we're going to use uh, maybe this is going to be a, another part. Okay, it does not look perfect. I'm just going to go here, and that looks okay. All right, so that's one more part, and then this is our third part. Perfect. So I'm, I'm dividing them into four different parts. This is the first part, this is the second part, this is the third part, this is fourth part. Now the second part and the third part will be made using just one feature called Luft Bow Space feature, which is right here. And this last part will be developed using a dome feature, which is right here. And this part right here, we will develop it using a revolve tool, revolve bow space, and if it really needs to connect them together at some point, we may use a loft bow space again, or we will use a boundary bow space tool right here. So let's take a look how we how we really do that. So I have sketched uh, some details on my front plane. I'm gonna click OK there. Now, first thing we really need is that we need to have one plane here, one plane here, and one plane here on the lines that we just developed. So to have the plane right there, now why we need the plane there? Because we are going to give these profiles here in order to make the loft. Loft requires profile, close profile. So uh, let's let's make the, those planes first where we're going to make the profile. So I'm going to do that real quick. So as we can see, we have one front plane right here. I'm just going to make a plane which is parallel to the front plane. Just gonna go planes. There we go, and it looks like it's doing pretty good. I'm gonna click OK. It says fully defined. Now, what I'm gonna do on this new plane, plane one, I'm just gonna click on it. And I'm gonna sketch on it. In the sketch, I'm gonna select those three lines that we made previously on the front plane. So I'm just gonna click on one line, holding the control button on my keyboard. I'm gonna click another line and the third line. So now I selected all three lines and I'm going to go and use this tool called Convert Entities which will copy those three lines from the sketch 4 to sketch 5. So I'm just going to click on that and then you can see that all these images have been copied right there. I'm going to click OK and um, I'm going to get out of the sketch as well. Now we have those lines here, uh, pretty neat, clean. And now I'm just going to go click on reference geometry, make the plane. This time I'm going to use those details, those both lines 
uh, to make the planes I'm gonna select three different points in order to make a plane which will be exactly touching and passing through both the lines it's gonna go click on that and it says fully defined here we go so we have one detail ready I'm just gonna go click on plane and uh, I'm just gonna clear it it's just remembering the first plane that we just created it's gonna click on one point second point and I'm gonna click on third point it's fully defined and uh, now I'm gonna go and repeat the same thing right here as well I'm gonna go plane again it just creates a plane which is parallel to plane 3 but we don't want that so I'm just gonna delete that click here I'm gonna click here and I'm gonna click on this point I'm gonna say click OK I'm gonna go to front view and I'm just going to hide the plane one because I don't think we're going to use that plane anymore. We're going to use this plane. And uh, just for your comfort, I'm going to make this plane a little bigger. And at the other side as well. Alright, that looks okay. I'm just going to hide sketch number 5 and sketch number 4. Which are just the lines that we use to create the planes. Because we're not going to use them anymore either. So I'm just going to hide it, just to make it more clear. Now these images, they seem pretty good, but they are, they are not, not transparent. If I want to make it transparent, I'll just double click on the image. I'm going to go to and select full image right here. And transparency, I'm just going to select about 50%, 53%, doesn't matter. I'm just going to do the same thing on this another sketch as well, full image. 50 to 60 percent that looks okay so now the sketch that's on the top plane we're not going to use it right away so let's just uh, hide that sketch as well and work with the with the sketch 2 which has image of the pen in the front view now we created this planes right here and we're going to use those planes later on but before we use them let's uh, let's develop a couple curves here so I'm just gonna show you how we do that just gonna go click on front plane sketch I'm gonna use this plan tool here and uh, just going to click right here when this yellow icon shows second point I'm gonna use I'm just gonna use it right here and I'm gonna click and select I'm gonna click on the point right here and as you can see now I'm just gonna play with this gray little handles here first dot think that is going pretty good so far okay it looks good nice enough so this is sketch 6 we're going to use uh, this particular spline as one of our guide curve so I'm gonna click uh, confirm and get out the sketch I'm just gonna rename it saying uh, guide curve 1 now we're going to make another sketch which is gonna be guide curve 2 which is gonna be from here to here so I'm just gonna make another sketch on a front plane make sure all the guide curves are on separate sketches and all the profiles that we're going to make that needs to be on a separate sketch as well I'm gonna go and click on spline tool again just gonna go right here and I'm gonna click on the point here I'm gonna click on this point right here and I'm gonna click on this point right here once this is done I'm not gonna touch the center point I'm just gonna play with the side points and side handles right here and I think uh, that's one and I think that looks pretty good as well I guess Okay. Now I think that is looking very, very close. I'm just gonna make sure that it's perfect. All right, I think that curve looks pretty good. Now you just need to observe in this case here. A lot of people start playing with the center handles first, 
and the mass of the entire spline. A number of people have observed using multiple points on the spline just to get the right curve. So spline is a kind of tool in which you need to use as minimum points as you really need. As you can observe here in the first sketch or guide curve one, we just use only two points. One point here, one point here, and we're, we just played with the handles in order to get the right shape. In this guide curve two, which is sketch seven at this point, uh, we just played with one handle at this edge and one handle at this edge, and that's what gives us the perfect shape. So make sure when, you, when you're when you working with spline, try to minimize the control points. Uh, that will really allow you to have a very perfect and a smooth, a smooth looking shape. So that looks pretty good here. I'm going to get out the sketch. So we have two guide curves ready. Uh, guide curve 1 on top and guide curve 2 on second. I'm just going to change the name of it. There we go. So we have two guide curves ready and now we're going to start making profiles. Now where are we going to make the profiles? We're going to make the profiles on the planes that we just developed right here. And how are we going to do that? So let me tell you what we're going to do here. On the plane 2, we're going to make a circular profile. On a plane 3, we're going to make an elliptical profile. And on plane 4, we're going to make a circle again. So circle, ellipse, circle. That's the strategy here. Let's start doing that. So now we're here on plane 2. I'm just going to click on sketch. We're here. What I'm going to do first thing. And I'm just going to unhide that sketch real quick. A sketch 4. I'm going to make it visible. And I'm just going to draw a line here. Starting from this particular point to this particular point right here. That's one point. Now I'm just going to hide sketch 4. And I'm just going to make this line as a construction geometry. So as you can see the endpoints here are exactly endpoint at the edge of the edge of the our guide curves. So we have those details here. Now why did I do that? Because I wanted a center point to draw a circle. So now we got it here. Our, that's our center point. And here we go. That's going to be our circle. I click OK. Select and it seems it's fully defined so we're good to go I'm just gonna get out the sketch I'm here on the plane 3 now I'm just gonna do similar I'm just gonna go here click sketch so in this case I have I have different trick to, to to do what I'm gonna do I'm just gonna hide this sketch 4 so let's make ellipse real quick just gonna go here when it shows me in the vertical sign I'm going to click OK and when it sh will show me the horizontal sh uh, OK, it will not. Anyways, I'm here. So now we can see this uh, ellipse is uh, right here on the plane. Uh, but it's not, it does not have any relationship till now. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to start giving the ellipse a relationship. I'm going to click on the this point on ellipse, holding the control button, I'm going to click on this curve. And then I'm going to give it a Pierce relationship right there. So you can see spline point 5 and guide curve 1 has a Pierce relationship. I'm going to click OK. And that's exactly the same thing I'm going to do here. I'm going to click on the point. You can see here the ellipse is a little bigger. I have not given any perfect dimension to ellipse. But what's going to happen here is the moment I give a Pierce relationship between this point and the spline right here, it's going to take the right dimension in between it. I'm, gonna, I'm just selecting this point, holding control button, I'm going to select the spline and I'm going to click on the Pierce relationship. And as you can see, it shows point 7 and guide curve 2. I'm going to click OK and I think that looks pretty good. Now we need to make sure that this ellipse is big enough. Now how we make sure that? So we're just going to unhide uh, the sketch 1 that has a top plane image. And in the top plane, we're just going to take a look that how big is the ellipse we can see that the ellipse is going outside the the edge of the pen so I'm just gonna start making the breadth of it a little smaller oh just go by very small so I'm just gonna put eight millimeters okay ten millimeters that goes too big so I'm just gonna make it uh, 9.5 and I think that looks okay because it goes a little bit out here and it's a little bit in here let me try 9.8 uh, so that looks perfect now why it's doing that because our image that we made on the top plane 
it's uh, it does not have our pan image exactly in the center. You can see there's white space here in the image. This is a little bigger area compared to area here to the edge. So that's why it's making a little problem. But just don't worry about that. I think we're we're doing pretty good so far. So we have one circle here. We have one ellipse here, and uh, then we're gonna get out the sketch. We're going to make another circle here on plane four. Just to make the perfect circle, I'm gonna again try and use the sketch four. Let's see if it allows us to do that. Here we go. I'm gonna sketch real quick. Okay, it does allow us to do that. Perfect. Now I'm gonna hide sketch four and I'm just gonna make the construction geometry. It looks pretty good. I'm just gonna make a circle here from the center point or midpoint of the line. I'm going to click on that and the radius is going to be exactly the length of the line from the center point. Just looks fully defined. I'm going to click OK. Now if I hide sketch 1 as image and sketch 2 as image, you can see very clearly we have this profile ready which has which has two guide curves, one on top, one on bottom, and we have three different profiles. One is circle, one is ellipse, and another one is circle. So that's the details that we really need. And now we're going to use a loft feature here. I'm going to click on loft. In the profiles, I'm going to start selecting from left to right. So circle is first, then it's ellipse, and then I have another circle. So as you can see, it develops a surface. Now we have this green little dots here. Uh, it seems like it's been twisted. So we're going to play with this green dots and we'll try and make sure that they look perfect. In ideal situation, I usually keep them here on top just to avoid because it snaps at the top point. Uh, in all the cases, we have a circle or splines there. So there we go. That looks perfect as well. Now under the guide curve options, I'm going to select the guide curve 1, which you can select from this tree here as well, called guide curve 1 and guide curve 2. Let me just, yeah, guide curve 1 and guide curve 2. So I'm just going to pick guide curve 1. So it takes a shape of the guide curve 1. And now I'm going to pick the guide curve 2. And it takes a shape of guide curve 2 as well. And as we can see, it provides us the preview. We're not going to touch anything with start and constraint in this uh, tutorial using loft, but uh, that looks pretty good so far. I'm going to click OK. And as you can see, we have one part of our, our, our micro pen is ready, which is a central part of it. Now, after using this loft feature, if we just unhide this image real quick, we can see our center part is ready. Now we need to work on making this back part, which is which is very easy. Uh, we're going to use a dome tool here. Let me just hide this uh, plane two and plane three because I think they're coming in the way for us for now. Just gonna hide them, and I'm gonna click on the dome tool. In the parameters or faces to dome, I'm just gonna click and and zoom in in right here and select this particular face. There we go. And if we see it very carefully, it just makes a round little dome here. But we don't need round. It needs to be following this a circle shape. At the same time, it needs to be going and following our internal profile here as well. So you see to the left here, there's an option called elliptical dome. Check that option. And once you check that option, you will see it changes from a, a circular dome to an elliptical dome. I'm going to just control one uh, and go to the front view it just looks pretty good so far and uh, I'm just gonna decrease the amount of it 8 looks still a little bigger than what we have in the image I'm gonna make it 7 a little bigger I'm gonna make it 6 uh, that's smaller so let's do 6.5 a little smaller let me do about 6.7 that looks fairly good, uh, very, very close. I'm just gonna let that be selected and I'm gonna check it. Here we go. So now the back of the pen is ready, center of the pen is ready, and we're now going to start working on the on the front, front part of the plane. 
And as I mentioned earlier, we're going to use uh, a, a revolved bow space tool here. So let's take a look how we how we really do that. So we are here and we already have this plane four uh, to start with. And we're going to do most of our sketching on the front plane. So we're here and right here. Just going to make one more sketch here. Just going to keep this visible. And uh, while I'm here on plane four, I'm going to just sketch real quick a line which starts right here at this point. Okay, at this point to the point. We can actually use the old line and just make it convert entities. Uh, I'm just going to hide this and I'm just going to make this into construction geometry. And now while we're here, we're going to we're going to hit control one and on the front plane we're gonna stop making a sketch now. A sketch will have one line that we can see here. There we go, that's what we're going to use. Just gonna go here, click on the point, hit control one, and I think I'll let it go till here. Okay, something happened. Just it just didn't go through. So anyway, let's try one more time. Okay, I think I think maybe I'm on the wrong plane. I'm just gonna go front plane and sketch on the front plane. Click there and see what I get. Get this, and I think now it's allowing me to do that. And uh, that's our center line. So I think the mistake that I was doing it was I was trying to probably sketch on uh, this plane, and that's why it wasn't allowing me to do that. I think that looks the center axis right there, nice and clean. And then I'm just gonna remain in the sketch on the front plane, and I'll just stop making all the details real quick. As we can see here, it goes up till here. And before I actually do anything else, I have to just check uh, check the revolve feature. Let's see how it, how it comes along. Uh, in the selection contours, I'm going to select this, and in the axis, I'm going to select this. And let's see what it gives us. I'm going to click OK. And if you see it very carefully, when we zoom in, and if I hide the, the plane 4, that it is developing a little, little gap. I'm just going to hide the main picture as well. So it's creating a little gap right here in between too. So just to deal with that situation, what we're going to do here is that we're going to go back to Revolve Feature. I'm going to edit the sketch and under the sketch, we're just going to take this line and we're going to offset that line a little bit towards right. I'm just going to uncheck the select line and it needs to be about three millimeters. Oh, that's too much. We'll make it a two millimeters, well, maybe one millimeter. I think it will look better. Okay, I'll go there, one millimeters, and now I'm going to use a trim tool real quick. I'm going to delete that, I'm going to delete this. I'm going to zoom in and make sure that I delete this as well. And I don't think I can, oh, I can delete that, that's perfect. So that looks okay. Now I'm just going to click OK, and I'll, I can see that you know, there, are, there are two different bodies now. That, that's just one body separate from another body. Just gonna edit this uh, this details here real quick. I think I'll let it stay there. And so far it looks okay to me. I'm gonna I'm gonna click OK. And here I'm just gonna use a fillet tool to give it a big fillet. Ten is I think too big. I'm just gonna give it one millimeter and let's see what it gives me. Uh, it gives I think a good detail. I'll click OK on this edge right here. I'm going to give a fillet again, but this time I'm going to do probably 1.5, a little bigger. And uh, here I'm going to give chamfer instead of fillet. I'm just going to go down and give a chamfer. Uh, make it 45 degree and probably just give it one. Uh, one is too much. I'm going to do 0.7 I guess. It looks better. I'll take this and now here at this point we're going to use use uh, the loft tool one more time. 
Before we do that, I'm just going to hide that gray line because I don't think I really want to see that line. So now, as you can see, we have the entire micro pen ready uh, from from the part one is ready, the center part is ready, and third part is ready too. Now we need to connect these two parts. We still need to make the tip, but we'll do it in a minute. So we are here, and just to join this tip, I'm just going to use a loft bow's base again. You can use again boundary bow's base too if you're familiar with that. I'm going to pick uh, this line, and I'm going to pick this line. Produce. So we can see here that it tells us that it cannot be produced because it just will develop a self-intersecting uh, geometry. Now why this error is showing up here is because that that the space between uh, this one part and another is very very small and if it will try to develop uh, a loft then it will really produce a self-intersecting geometry. So I tried various options, but I don't think it's really working. So what we should be doing here, uh, just to resolve that problem, I'm just gonna go back to the to this revolve sketch, and I'll try to move this a little more towards the outside. That will give us some more space here. And I'm gonna click OK. Now, once we're here, I'm just gonna use a loft, and I'm gonna click on this profile and click on this edge. As you can see, it just really develops a nice little surface there, which I think resolves the problem that we were dealing with. And I'm sure uh, many of you might have uh, been gone through that as well. I'm just gonna end in stock constraint. I'm gonna use a tangency to face, and I'm gonna use another one as a tangency to face as well. Uh, I think which will give the very good, good surface right there. So. It looks like that it developed everything the way we really wanted. So now we have these details ready, uh, and now we're going to work on the work on the tip. So I'm just gonna go and do, just gonna go and sketch on the tip real quick. I'm gonna click on the edge, and I'm gonna do offset entities. I'm, I'm gonna do reverse. And I think that looks uh, pretty good to me. I'm gonna click OK. It's gonna go feature, and I'm just gonna extrude it. I did extrude it a little bit, and I'm just gonna have a little extrude there, very little, just a one millimeter. I'm gonna click OK, and then I'm gonna use a dome feature again in order to make a little dome here. OK, I'm gonna click on elliptical dome, and. Uh, based on the proportion and the image that we have here let me just make it visible as well uh, I'm just gonna go a little smaller three millimeters that looks okay I think the circle is a little smaller so what we can do in that case we can go to extrude right here and we can make this circle dimension so, point eight. Click. It's gonna make it a little bigger. The point is bigger now. So as we can see, these details here are are pretty neat. Uh, now let's let's just try to hide this body and see the detail here for a little bit. So as you can see here, it just goes very very flat. So, uh, like the tran transition between this edge to this edge is, is very flat, and I think in our case, what's happening is uh, uh, that it's just, just trying to show us a fillet. So, let's try to resolve that problem while we're working with the loft. So, we are right here, and uh, let's see what we really can do. And I'm gonna try here normal to profile as well which will provide a very smooth transition without the fillet looking details. So if I hide this image now, you'll be able to see it more clearly. That it really has developed the detail very, very neat. I'm just gonna change uh, one of the settings real quick and try to see how far it will go. Okay, let's see what it does. I think it's 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 doing it pretty good so far. Is is no problem. Uh, looks very very close. Now we're just gonna turn on our sketch real quick. 
there we go and uh, if we just convert this to a transparent line we can see that our sketch had a line as well right here so we're just going to use that sketch uh, 4 or sketch 5 and what we're going to do we're just going to go on the top plane just make a sketch just unhide the sketch 4 pick this line only and I'm going to do convert entities click OK get out the sketch and I'm going to use a split tool that's right here click on split sketch 15 is selected and we just developed uh, using sketch 4 and we used uh, convert entities for that I'm going to click on cut part right here once I do that it will show me two different bodies I want to click on both and I'm going to make sure that I don't want to consume any bodies and I don't want to copy custom properties and new parts as well I was going to keep both of them unchecked I'm going to click OK here and I'm going to hide the sketch uh, 4 as well and I'm going to hide sketch uh, 2 as well which has images I'm just going to go and make this guide unhide and uh, I'm going to hide that sketch as well so now you can see we have these details here what I'm going to do I'm going to hide this side and I'm going to go and give it a fillet I'm going to give it a fill of about 0.2 millimeters it looks nice uh, now I'm just going to go on top under the bodies I'm going to make it unhide I'm going to make this guy hide just so that I can work more faster uh, if you can just look at the edge and you can do it perfect there's no problem I'm just going to point 3 here I'm going to click OK there we go so I think we have our pen ready now the other detail that I guess we're, we're, we're still missing if we go on our on our top plane uh, we and if we turn on the sketch we can see that there is still some detail that we really need to see that's not there or we just need to draw this this cut so how we make the cut making the cut is very easy I'm just gonna go on the top plane I'm gonna make a sketch here I'm gonna use a spline I'm gonna make one point from here to another and I'm gonna use those handles just to give us the perfect detail and according to the curve that really looks here I'm just gonna change some of the details and try to make it work that looks very very close so far I can actually make it perfect like this okay that looks perfect mirror mirror about this click OK but that's not perfect so I'm just gonna delete this uh, mirror relationships that I developed and I'm gonna pick this spline and I'm gonna stop moving it that looks perfect now that's what I'm gonna use to cut the objects uh, again and I'm gonna go click on split tool this time I'm going to use the last sketch that we just developed sketch 16 and I'm gonna click on cut part it develops multiple bodies I'm gonna click OK check all of them make sure these are unchecked and I'm gonna click OK here I'm gonna go here and make my body solid looking I'm just gonna go hide that to sketch and this detail here before I actually hide them I'm gonna hide the main sketch so we have cutouts here now I'm gonna click on the surface I'm gonna hide that and I'm gonna click on the surface and I'm gonna hide that as well I think there is there's there's one mistake uh, here that we need to really observe the ellipse here a smaller cutout and here it's a bigger cutout we actually need a cutout of about this size so I think uh, what I'm gonna go back and do I'm just gonna go control Z control Z until I actually have the sketch I'm gonna go and add a sketch mode and I'm gonna make sure that I have those details until those mirror relationships are not back okay I think mirror relationship is back right here and I'm gonna keep up to that and then I'm gonna get out of the sketch split tool let's see if, if we keep the mirror relationships uh, if it does it perfect then I think we are wrong and it that is right well yeah I think that really looks uh, perfect on both the sides if, if we see very carefully both 
about the size of the ellipses that look perfect. Now how we can make sure that is like that. If you see any other line besides this, that means your ellipse is a little off to each other. So I think that is making it perfect. Let the mirror relationship be there and I think your details will come up correct. And here, this concludes uh, the, the tutorial for making a marker pen. Um, what you really can do, you can take this model to PhotoView 360 or any other rendering engine that, you're very, that you are very familiar with. Um, and then just apply material to faces instead of the bodies because we don't have bodies here that have separate material. Uh, you can apply rubber material here, you can apply plastic materials here, and ultimately a tip material somewhere on the tip. So I think that concludes the tutorial and hope it, it was informative. Thank you for watching.